Hi, in this session, I'm going to show you how to reverse a list or flip a list. Let's say, for example, you get a list of names or you get some other list of values and you want to have the first item show up last and the last item show up first. And basically, just flip the list. There's a couple ways that you can do that. Uh, I'll show you two methods of doing it. Uh, well, first one is probably going to be an easier way. So the second method is a little bit more complicated, but it's pretty cool. It's a formula with a couple functions. So let's go ahead and do the first method. So the first method basically is to have a helper column. So we create a number column next to our source column. So I'm just going to go ahead and type 1, enter 2, enter 3. And after I do that, I can just go ahead and uh, double click the fill handle and it will go ahead and fill it out and increase it by one for each one. And in this instance, all I need to do is just basically custom filter it. So I can go up into the Home tab, go to Sort Filter, under custom sort and sort by column B which is the number column that's the label because I have this checked here my data has headers and I go from largest to smallest and click OK and now you can see it's flipped and you can just do a copy control C to copy and control V to paste if you wanted to paste it somewhere else so that's the first method and it's pretty easy pretty straightforward and as long as you could have the ability to create a second column in your data you can pretty much flip or reverse that list so the second method is a little bit more complicated. It's got a couple functions within a formula. And, a, and it's got three functions, an index function, a count a function, and a rows function. So what the index function does is it's basically a lookup function. So if I type index here and just press tab, and I'm going to go ahead and bring up the insert function window. Uh, this is, I'm going to choose the first one of the index function. Click OK it's going to bring up the function argument window and it kind of gives you a description of what the index does and so basically it will bring back the value of a cell uh, based on the array and the row number and column number designation so in the array if I selected this particular list or these range of cells you can see that it selected those now depending on the row number if I want the second row number or the, excuse me the first row number third one or fourth one it's going to bring that back so if I type up so if I type 5 here, it's going to bring back AND. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because it's from A2 to A6. You can see AND is selected here. So that's what the index does. With the column number, that's an optional. You can see these two are bold, so that's required. But the column number argument is optional. I've only got one column here, so I really don't need it. So I can go ahead and cancel that. So that's what the index function does. Let me kind of describe what the COUNT A function does. So the COUNT A function, it just counts, if I select that now, Go ahead and click on the insert function. Whoops. Let me just do type count A, press enter, and click that, double click that. So what count A does is it basically counts up the range of cells that are not empty. So oh, let me go and delete this here. So if I select this range of cells, it's going to count up those cells that aren't empty. So of course, if I select this range, none of them is empty. It's going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you can see that's selected here, and 5 is selected here. So 5 is the uh, reported value that it's given from this particular function. So that's what the count does. All right, let me get into the rows and see what row does. So if I click here, type rows, I'm just going to press tab to complete that and click on the insert function icon there. So what rows does is it just basically counts the number of rows in a reference or array. So if I selected all this, it's basically just going to count how many rows does this array take up. This array is going to take up five rows, one, two, three, four, five, right? So if I select that, you'll see that it takes up five. It counted that array. So I click cancel. And so that kind of describes what these particular functions do. So in this instance, what it's doing is it's looking at this particular the index is looking at this particular array. It's going to count it five. It's going to minus the rows as it counts from A2 to A2, which is this first one here. So five minus one is four, and then it's going to add one, five. So basically what it's going to do is out of this array, it's going to bring back the fifth row, one, two, three, four, five, which is going to be N up here. So I'm going to go ahead and what I did was I added a little space here so you can see the formula. If I delete that space and press enter, you'll see and you'll see and is the result. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. 
if we go into the formula evaluator, you'll see that in action. Let me go ahead and show you that. Let me go under formulas, go to evaluate formula, and you'll see the evaluate formula window come up. So this is what it's doing. Count A is going to be the first thing it's going to evaluate on. So it's going to count those five rows, one, two, three, four, five. Next, it's going to evaluate the rows formula, and it's going to bring back one because it's in the first row. And it's going to do five minus one, which is four, plus one, plus one, it's going to be five. So out of this index, it's going to look at this array and bring back the fifth row, one, two, three, four, five, which is Anne. You can see Anne is evaluated there. So what I can do right now, if I would double click this, it's going to copy the formula down. And you'll notice that pretty much everything stays the same because these are absolute references. They have a dollar sign in front of the letter and number. So when you copy down, it doesn't increase it. You'll notice that in the arguments for the row function, you have a relative cell reference. So basically, this means that it's it won't when it copies over somewhere, it's going to increment. So when I copy this down, it's going to increment from A2 to A3. So let me go and press escape to get out of that. If I go to B3 here, you'll see that it goes to A3, this goes to A4. That's the only thing that changes in this formula, A5 and A6. And so what it's doing is it's incrementing as it go down each time. So if I go down here and click on the evaluate formula, you'll see that it evaluates it based on that particular change, right? It's going to look at the array. Excuse me, it's going to look at the count. It's going to count five rows, count five values here. And the rows, it's going to look at A2 to A6, right? A2 to A6, and it's going to bring back 5. 5 minus 5 is 0, but you had that additional 1 there, so it's going to go look at the first row, right? So this index of this, and then bring back the first row, which is Joe. And so Joe shows up here. So that is the other way of reversing a list. Uh, not, as, not as simple and brief as the first method, but a little bit more complicated and using formulas. And uh, it actually saves, when you think about it, it, it saves you from creating a number list. And all you need to do is just, if you've already got this set up, you can just double click that. You've got other names on it. You can just double click it and bring it all the way down. So that's just the other way to do it. So here's the two methods to reverse a list or flip a list. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.